Hello, match day. Bournemouth taking on Nottingham Forest. Conditions clear, in fact, quite sunny. Perfect conditions for a lovely southern football match against a Forest team that are confident. Back to back wins, finding a way of getting points and results. Steve Cooper's picked up his patchy spell. And they have got lots of reasons to come here today and put in a good performance. We know they are desperate for the win here. They're desperate for the win here. But they don't win many football matches against the Cherries. We're unbeaten in five against them. We've won four of those matches. We beat them 1-0 with a Kiefer Moore and Philip Billing link-up goal last season. And we need more of that today. Will Dango Utara start? Well, I'd throw him in at the deep end. 18 appearances for Lorient in League One. League on. Six goals, six assists. An attacking winger can play right or left. Pace, skillful, thrown in at deep end. We've scored no goals in four games. You haven't even won a football match. We've got nothing to lose. Well, we've got a lot to lose because we're entering, in theory, the second half of the season. And we are 22 points off the minimum target of 38 points to stay in this league. So we've got a lot to lose. In fact, the only result that really satisfies me today is a win. But my score prediction is a 1-1. Subscribe to Cherish with Army. Hit the like button. I want to know what you think at the end of this video about the game. But we are a few hundred yards from Dean Court. Time to get behind the lads and the team. Let's not concede the first goal. We need to score first. Come on, you Cherries. In the 1910, we have got the match preview guest, Matt. How are you, mate? We're yeah, getting well, quite, quite closer to kickoff now. Getting that cut. Yeah, looking forward to it with a bit of trepidation. Be interesting to see when the team news comes out shortly mm. how Gary O'Neill sets up because I think Otara's obviously come in. Is he ready to be thrown in? Well, part of me thinks why not? Because we need we need players, as I said in the preview, to feed off a keeper more. We need him to dominate up top. We need he needs players around him with pace and that can make things happen. And you know, with Otara on one side, potentially Dembele on the other, it gives us the option to hopefully do that. O'Neill's just got to go for it today. If I was him, I'd be thinking this could be my last chance to loan here. Let's just go all out. And, and, and go for it because we've got nothing to lose almost. Yeah, I do agree. I think kicking the can down the road is not going to achieve anything. And I know that Utara is only 20. Six goals, six assists for Lorient. Just throw him in at the deep end and he might have some trickery about him. The same question could be asked about Dembele. Just do something different today because we need to win, right? It's a, it's a must win. I mean, you look at the table, they, they were rock bottom and suddenly they're above us. You know, we're... In, we're, we're um, we're on, a slippery, we're on a slippery slope, aren't we? We've, this is our worst run, apparently, in League and Cup for 40 years, somebody was just saying behind me. How true that is, I wouldn't be surprised. We haven't even scored since we come back from the restart, so he's got to do something different, hasn't he? He's got to approach it differently. He needs that Everton approach, like we said in the preview. If he doesn't do that, like you said, Kurt, I think that the, the atmosphere in the stadium turns a bit toxic. Yeah. If we concede the first goal, then we're in real trouble because you, there's no pulling it back from there, is there, I don't think. It's going to be really difficult. So he has to go all out for me and just balls out and go for it. I went 1-1, one, one. you were 2-1, sticking with it? I'm sticking with it at the moment. I mean, I'll, I'll probably let you know again when the team news comes out at 2 o'clock, but at the moment, yeah, I'm going to go 2 I'm going to be positive because something's got to turn at some point. So let's hope it's today. Come on, you cherries. Up the cherries. Team lineups are out. Neto in goal. It's going to be Smith right back, Stevens, Kelly, Zamura left back. Then we've got Rothwell and Lerma. We're predicting 
to be in midfield alongside potentially Ryan Christie more central with Jaden Anthony, Utara making a debut and Kiefer Moore on the bench, Travers, Mepham, Stacey, Sariki, Pearson, Sanessi, Pollock, Sadie and Adedeju, however you say it. Um, my brain's just exploded. Confused, explain. Um, yeah, so good news is, let's start with the good news, Utara's straight in. Yeah. So we've got some pace in the team. Obviously, you know, we don't know what he's going to be like, but that's a positive. Um, Billings not in the squad, so he must be injured, which is a big blow. Um, the back four, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Mepham and Sanessi have been dropped to the bench. Um, looks like Stevens and Kelly are centre half, so Lloyd Kelly back to centre half. Drops, for me, probably the best defender of the season in Meps. Yeah. Work that one out. Um, so that means Jay-Z's back at left back. Good going forward, obviously. That's that's fine. He can link that with Jaden Anthony. Yeah. And Adam Smith comes back to right back. Fine. I guess with uh, Lewis Cook being out, it's going to be Rothwell, maybe, essentially, with Lerma. Um, Christie, maybe, inside. I've got no idea. All I know is that, basically, the back four is very, very strange. And, uh, yeah, and on a day when people really need a result, I'm not sure what that defence is all about. Yeah, Dembele on the bench again, probably because Utara's come in, but a lot of fans wanting Dembele to start this game, but he isn't. Yeah, really confused about the centre-back partnership, really confused about the defenders on the bench, and if we concede inside 20 minutes, what's the atmosphere going to be like? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, um, not probably not great. I mean, looking at that bench, if we're losing the game, you've got obviously the keeper, and you've got Stacey, Mepham, Senesi, Pearson, and three youth players. So you've basically only got Sariki Dembele to come on and change the game. Three youth players still. Let's talk about that, shall we? Because, you know, we let the players go out last week. Lowe, Mark Condes, James Hill went out um, to clear the decks. For the second game running, a week later, we've got three youth players on the bench. Still only one incoming signing. Um, we've got to try and be positive. It's a game we need to win. But yep. more questions than answers yet again for me. And... Um, is this potentially Gary O'Neill's final hand that he's playing? Not sure. Need to win this football match. Definitely can't lose it. That's your lineups. The first 20 minutes is massive. Here comes the action. one first goal in this game after 12 minutes and I told you before this game and I was saying that I feared an early goal conceded and that's happened and no shocks here poorly defended a little dinked in free kick headed back across Ryan Yates heads it in might get a deflection the Cherries are 1-0 down in a fifth match that we're trying to score a goal VAR might be in play here
20 minutes then early thoughts on Dango Gutara he's a player that clearly wants the ball he has energy about him I love the ambition he has for wanting the ball at every chance and he wants to play forward his first thought is to get forward either play the ball forward or dribble forward I like it that's what we need what we've lacked in the previous games is someone who's going to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and Dango has had a positive start to his Premier League debut. Anthony's off the left, Christie is tucked in with Rothwell and Lerm essentially as, as predicted. And that VAR decision that's gone for the Cherries has given us a bit of a lift. chance for Keeper Moore and he knows it. Normally he would bury that inside the six yard box. Pretty much central. Come it in quite fast but Keeper will be disappointed with that. opening goal that they thought they had scored after 12 minutes. Bournemouth really ramped things up and everything was going through, mainly Dango Utara, who wanted the ball, wanted to play forward. It was him that assisted Jaden Anthony's goal. And Bournemouth has scored in the Premier League. The fans celebrated, still work to do. But this is more positive than what we've seen of late. They're on form today, squared it, drilled it across low. Lutara nearly got on the end of it, went out for a corner. Now the real risk we have here is that Bournemouth start to drop really deep as we get into the last stages of this second half. We start to defend for our lives. We need to delay that moment as long as possible. And on the counter, we need to be effective, fast and clinical. Can we get a second goal? Oh, oh, oh. 
are changes are coming for AFC Bournemouth. Joe Rockwell is going off the pitch. Ben Pearson is coming on. A big last period for the Cherries. Gonna hold on to these three points. <laughs> Bloody knew it. Sam Surridge has got on the end of a shot stroke cross from Morgan Gift White, given away by Keith Moore initially. And they absolutely took advantage. Seven minutes to go. Bournemouth one, Forest one. For the second time in this game, Nottingham Forest goal is being checked on VAR for offside. must be close because time is starting to go on a little bit. This must be a close decision. Goal given. 1-1. One, one. Decision no offside. Thanks for watching to the end of this match day vlog. The Cherries came very close to getting all three points. It was great feeling to see a score again in the Premier League. It's been a while and there were some good performances in there today. But again, in-game management from our new inexperienced head coach potentially let us down. He can't control what Kiefer Moore does with the football, but inviting pressure, not having the same complete intent in the second half, not making changes at the right time, not matching up formations when the opposite manager makes a change, all those little things that comes with experience and time that maybe, again, cost us all three points. And Forest, I think that's only their third goal away from home this season. And they don't get many points against us. And they'll, they'll be happier, I'm sure of that. And, and as I said in the match reaction that might be on the screen somewhere, I think that's us down in the relegation zone and the battle becomes a little bit harder. And what does that do for incoming signings? Because we're apparently looking at four or five or three or four. We know that Dan Juma this morning, we found out, has, has gone going to Everton and that's a little bit disappointing considering we offered him more money but the appeal wasn't quite there and questions need to be thought about why the appeal wasn't there is it the stature of the club but he knows the club is it the fans no he knows the fans I don't know what what wasn't right for Dan Juma that he picked a poor Everton side that's arguably worse than us <sighs> don't know he didn't feel the vibe whatever and I hope he doesn't relegate us on the last day of the season. And we're going to have to do a lot of work between now and then to get enough points to be fighting to stay up because 21 points is about the target from here and we've got some tough games coming with Brighton, Newcastle, etc. Do, get us, do give us your thoughts in the comments. Like, subscribe. Thank you to our monthly members and our sponsors, Aquashine. Some positives, feel a little bit deflated again because I think we really needed the three points. But we stopped the rot, we scored a goal, Utara was exciting at times. And now we have to just look on at the transfer window and see if we can add to this team. And we'll keep fighting whilst we have every chance to. 
Until the next one, we'll see you soon. Up cherries.